Hey, what's up everyone? Chip Waters here. And today we want to talk about how do we bake bevels into our objects in Eevee. As many of you know, the bevel node is not supported in Eevee. Let's go ahead and hook it up to our normal channel here. You can see that we don't see any bevels. If I go over to my cycles rendering, you'll see that now we're getting a nice set of bevels. And it's particularly important to be able to do this when you've got a lot of interior detail like we're seeing here, what this bevel tool does is it actually creates rendered bevels as opposed to geometry bevels. And why is that better? Well, let's take a look. So with this hooked up, let's go back into our EV rendering and you'll see that the bevel node does not work. So you can appreciate that we're going to want to be able to add bevels. Now let's, let's do it the simple way and let's go in here and add a bevel modifier to this object. And with clamp override, it shows that there are no angles that we can use, meaning that anything that we add, I'm going to turn this off and we'll try and go down a little bit. But as we start to add even the tiniest of bevels, we start to see that we're going to end up with shading artifacts and edges are going to cross over and there's going to be a lot of a lot of problems with this as we move forward. So now we're in Eevee and we're seeing that we don't have this bevel hooked up, but I do have one that I've already baked. Let's go ahead and plug that guy in real quick. We're in Eevee and you can see the bevels have turned out quite nicely. We don't have any of those shading or smoothing artifacts that we were seeing earlier. So what I want to do is I want to walk you through this process from the very beginning to show you how this is done. Uh, it might be interesting to note that this is a rather difficult model to bake because it's got these really large insets coming in. So we're going to talk about how we can solve that as well. So we'll get started with a blank new scene. Shift A, we'll add a plane, tab into it, extrude up, hit it number two, tab back out. So here we have a nice white box. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to smooth it. And then I'm going to go over here to the vertex editor and look at our normals and I'm going to auto smooth and this time I'm going to give it a 20. So there we have it. Now I don't like white so I'm going to go to my kit ops in my materials editor. Grab a metal. I think I'll just use a steel metal. And if I hold the control key down it'll add it over here. And there's our steel metal ready to go. If I want to I can adjust in here the scale. So maybe make this 0 0.5, 0 0.3. 0.5, something like that, maybe a little smoother. So there we have it. So now I'm working with a nice steel block. Let's go ahead and jump back into Kit Ops and I'm going to go to Metal Simple and I'll scroll down and I'm going to grab this one right here. I will set it right on the top. Since I'm using Kit Ops Pro, I've got some features that I can use in Smart. So I'll add this insert here and I'll scroll down. I'll center it on both. If I wasn't using Kit Ops Pro, I can just always go up to the location and zero it out here, which I'll probably show you in a minute. How do we do that? And then let's just go ahead and, and just punch it out just a little bit, something like this. Cut all the way through and then let's expand it down a little bit. And I want to keep cutting through so I don't get these little boxes out. So I've got kind of a smooth angle there. That's my first large cut using these simple cutters. So next I'll go to my second one and that's going to be this champ for all. And again, I am going to select my box. And I'm going to go ahead and add that by tapping the Add Insert button. And I'll drop it anywhere. And I'm going to show you how we can do this. We know we want to center it on the X. So I can just go over here on X and go zero. So there we have that. Then I just want to I'm going to go in an orthographic projection. And I'm going to scale this so that I'm cutting into the object the way I want it to be cutting into it. You can see what we have there. I'm going to go ahead and move it out a little bit more. Get a little sharper cut. And see what that looks like. And with it select, because we're using Caps Pro, I'm going to go ahead and use the mirror on the Y axis. And there we have that. Next, I will add another cut in the front here. I'll use a slope cutter cut. I'll add the insert. And this time I'm going to rotate it about the Y90. R, Y90. And I'm going to set, and I'm going to center it. And then I'm going to rotate about the X and just move it in slot, if you will, running almost all the way through. And then lastly, let's just add one more cutter. Let's go and into our Kit Ops Toolkit and let's look at the complex ones. And I'm going to grab this one here. And with my cube selected, I'll add the insert and I'll roll down, center it both places, scale it up just a little bit. And there's really the model that we were working with before. So the next thing I want to do is I want to take this whole model and convert it into a single mesh. So I'll select my cube. I'll make sure I'm in regular mode. I'll go under object 
and I'll say convert to mesh and now that's good I am going to select all of my inserts well first I want to look at my object make sure in my modifiers there's nothing left here then I'm going to deselect everything and select the inserts hit the X button and delete those so here we have just our our cube and this is one mesh as you can see so so that's where we're starting and we're going to want to add bevels to this and you can see it's kind of the last step in finishing off an object is to add the bevels to give it that final realistic look so in order for a bevel normal map that has been rendered from cycles and placed into Eevee we're going to need to unwrap this mesh and it's one of the reasons why we can't include bevels in non UV wrapped objects so let's go ahead and see how that's done I'm going to switch over here to the UV editing and I'm going to create a new image and I'm going to make it 2048 by 2048 turn off alpha and say OK and we're going to name this box UVs were automatically dropped into edit mode of what the object was that was selected so I'm gonna select everything a I'm gonna hit the U button and I'm gonna say smart UV project well we're gonna leave this alone right now and say okay we're gonna look at what we have so I'm gonna zoom out now one of the things that we're gonna find out pretty quick is that if we try and use this as a UV projection map we're gonna have problems because everything is smushed up against the border they're all touching edges so our beveled maps aren't gonna look correct what we really want to do is once we've done this is we want to set up some settings so let's do the same thing again a I'm gonna hit U, smart UV project and in the angle limit we're gonna leave that I'm gonna just focus on island margins right now I'm gonna start adding the margins to this and say okay too much if I click on this little arrow right here I have one chance to change this so I'll go and I'll move it out so there there we have there's our there's our island margins but if you look this is the top of our cube and we have all of these parts touching so we're gonna have trouble right there I can tell you so I'm gonna need to adjust this angle limit down to we had 20 before now this is a lot better now we have a lot of space around our individual islands for our bevels to create clear and matching normal map let's go back to our layout and now I'm going to switch to the cycles renderer and you can see that we've got the cycles render up I'm gonna scroll down into my shader editor and I want to insert a bevel node search bevel, and we'll drag that down and I'm gonna put it actually here and I'm gonna hook it up directly to the normals first I want to move this up to six samples and you can see right now that it's applied the bevel but it's actually too fat I want to change this to be quite a bit less so I'll go to 0 0.01 let's try that so let's look at that that's actually not too bad that looks like if we look in here we'll see that that's probably not a bad number so we'll leave it like that okay so the next step we need to do is we're going to want to add an image that we can use to collect this new bait and to do that we'll go over to the image editor and we're going to say new and I'm going to leave it at 2048 by 2048 I'm going to call it bevel bait normal leave alpha off say okay let's go back to our shader editor now we need to add that texture into here so we just want to have an image texture in here so I'm gonna drag that in here like so while I'm in here I might as well add a normal map because we need to be able to convert that image texture to a normal map and I'll, so you can see these are not even hooked up for anything so I have this I want to I want to align this with that one we just created which was called bevel bake normal so now that's set so now we have two objects we have this one up here and this one down here the bevel bake normal is at 2k which is kind of large I might want to start it off at 1k if I wanted to do that I would just go over here and let's go ahead and drag out from here another window let's set this one to the image editor and we have this here and if I wanted to I could just click here and change the size here from 2048 which is what I'm going to do because this is a really large take a while to bake because the bevel node is a very heavy node in terms of computational requirements hit the end key to close this out we'll look at our image and now we select both of these things we have to have the object selected and then we need to select the image where we want that data to go to then we go back into our cycles engine and we look in here and we're going to look for bake and under bake we want to make sure that we're baking a normal so select a normal there leave everything else the way it is and you just hit this bake button and when I hit it I'll pause now okay you can see the bake that we got and you can see it looks pretty corrupted it doesn't look that great and that's because it's so low resolution but just to see what it's going to look like is I'll just go out here and I'm going to take this normal map now I'm going to plug it directly into this one and you can see what happened and one of the interesting things that happened is look at all the smoothing artifacts on this on this cube in fact let's go into Eevee and you can see it's even worse so 
that didn't work out at all. Well, what's the problem? Well, what's happening is that it's using the bevel data and it's and it's not applying any sharpening around here. That's the one thing. The other thing you can tell, I don't know if you can zoom up and see, but there's this grid kind of going across there. And the reason for that is that we're not using non-color data. Once we do that, we're going to get rid of that grid, but we still have our smoothing artifacts. So how are we going to fix those? So that's really a pretty simple fix, actually. Um, we go into our modifier for this, and we're going to add an edge split. And I know that's somewhat deprecated, but you find that we're just going to add it for the baking process. And then once we're done with the bake, we're going to go back and we're going to delete this. Let's go ahead and go through this process another time at that 1K resolution again. I'm going to again select this and select the object and select this image. We'll go over to our bake button and we will press it. And it baked really fast this time. Why is that? Well, it's because we didn't hook up our bevel shader. So this isn't going to work. We need to be, we need, first off, we need to make sure that we're in our cycles mode. Second off, we need to go ahead and hook up our bevel node in order for us to capture that data so that we didn't capture the data. You can tell. You see something like that, you know that that's what the problem was. Let's go ahead and do it again. Okay, now that we're done, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing I did before, switch it to the normal map. You can see, I'm going to go back into Eevee also. You can see now we have a much better object. And even if I go back into our edge modifier, you'll see that if I delete it, nothing happens. It all works fine. I'm going to undo that because I'm going to leave that on for further bakes. If I zoom up on here, I'm going to see I've got a little bit of problem in here. Some of these areas I need to look at. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to punch this up to a 4K limit. And that's going to take a long time to bake. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go right here. And then I'll downsample that down to 2K when I'm done. So I'm going to go to the 4096. Make sure I get my bake done over here. I need to make sure that I'm in cycles mode and I'm going to hit the pause button because this will take a while. Hit the bake button and here, oh, got to select our object, select our texture, hit the bake button. Okay, that bake took about four and a half minutes on my machine. You can see how much cleaner it is already. So let's go ahead and hook it directly in to our normal, like we just did there. And let's go to our Eevee and we can see how beautiful that turned out. In fact, we'll go back up here to our cycles. I'm going to go back into Eevee here, move up into our Eevee. We have an absolutely great bake. Look how nicely all those bevels turned out on the inside there. Just about perfect. So the next thing to do is to save this image. So I'm going to do uh, save as, and I'm going to call this a bevel bake for PNG. Now that it's saved, I'm going to go into Photoshop and inside Photoshop, I'll change the image size to 2048. And the reason why I'm doing it this way is I'm downsampling because the normal creation process does not use anti-aliasing. So this is one way that I can anti-alias this normal and, and maintain the smoothness that I was having at 4096 resolution at a lower resolution. So I'm going to go down 2048 and do that. And then I will save as another ping. And this one I'll call 2K save. And I could also save at 1K, but I find that 2K seems to work better. So I'm going to come in here and under this bevel normal over here, I'm going to load up my 2K version. And you can see that it looks almost identical. It looks great. So excited about how that worked out. The thing we also at this point want to do is under image, we might want to say, let's pack this image with this so that it auto automatically will be stored with the scene file. We'll never lose that normal because if we lose that normal, we have to go through this whole process all over again. Also with it selected, let's go back to our modifiers. Let's get rid of our edge split modifier. And you can see that everything is exactly the way it needs to be. If we want, we can basically use some of our other materials here. We can pipe the normal into them by just bringing it in right into this normal from the bevel. And we'll have to do another tutorial on how that works. I've got some other interesting things that I want to do with this, and I'm hoping to come up with something really exciting here, not too distant future. Okay. Thanks for stopping by and watching. Talk to you later.